Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ellie. If you're new to my channel, and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. So today I have for you guys another Jesus chats, and it is it's it's pretty easy. But you guys know, like in all of my Jesus chats, whether it's like tips and tricks or things I struggle with or motivation, like I want to share scripture with you guys. Um, so not all of these have a script. I, I think one I couldn't like I couldn't think of a scripture for, and so today's video is five tips or five ways to have a successful quiet time with God or a successful Bible study time with God. I don't know. So I don't know however you want to put it, but this is my five tips for alone time with God. And so the first thing I want to go into is, or at least the first thing that I do on the mornings or in the mornings when I know I'm going to be spending time with God, whether it just be singing songs to him and praising him or whether it just be praying or me studying up for a Jesus chats video um, I always fast and whether it be a week long fast of like no sweets or no YouTube or just not eating breakfast for that day until I've spent my time with God, I feel like I can hear God more. I feel closer to him. And because I'm telling my flesh, no, it's easier for my spirit to receive. And so I want to, the scripture that I have for that one is Psalms 69 at 10. So Psalms 69 10 says, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. So it just means like, that's how we should come to God. I feel like whenever we come to God in fasting, because like I said, when I'm telling my flesh no, I feel like God's just showing me things left and right, left and right. And like I said, it could just be for that morning. So don't eat or drink anything until you spend your time with God like that. I think that's a good way to start with fasting, like just for the morning after until you finish your alone time with God, like fast. And then like maybe you could go into like a week long fast of like, okay, no sweets, no sodas, like no bad drinks, only water and healthy food or anything like that. Like I think that this, like that's a good way to approach God. I, whenever I do the really big fast, whenever I'm like, I'm really lost about something or Brian and I are just needing an answer for something from God, or like we're going through a tough battle, like, and we want to give in to our flesh. We're like, okay, time to fast because our flesh is screaming at us and we need to tell it no. And so I think that's a really good way to come to God because like I said, it, it just allows like, so many like your spirit to be opened up so much because you're already telling your flesh no to something so yeah i think it's like more successful for your alone time with god okay so my number two so after you're fasting my next thing would be to worship him first so the way i do it is i usually will sing like one good i'll get on youtube i'll find like my two favorite songs that just make me like just remember what god's done for me and remember his love for me and just remember his sacrifices for me and what like his promises for me i'll find two songs that help me do that and i'll just and i'll just worship him in my room i'll dance around my room i'll sing to him i'll get on my knees and i'll worship him and i'll pray to him during this time and so worship for me is prayer is a form of worship, giving is a form of worship, singing is a form of worship. So just always come to him with worship first. So that way you can tell him like, thank you. And you know, I love you and you're an amazing God. And I know that you're gonna continue to do amazing things. You know, come to him in that aspect first. And I think that's just good. Like to me, I always wanna remind myself of everything that God has done for me because I wouldn't feel right then being like, oh God, like I'm struggling in this area, I need help. Well, okay, like let me remind myself of what he has helped me with. So that way I know and that I know that I know and I can have faith that's bursting out of me to know that he can help me with the next problem. And so for that scripture or for that one, I have the scripture Colossians chapter three, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and, admi and, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns of spiritual songs, sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And so we're even told that we should be worshiping God and teaching one another to worship God and singing songs and singing hymns and praises and just praising him. So that's why I think that's really important to include that in your alone time with God. Okay, and then number three, which is like 
duh, like how else are you going to have alone time with God and hear from him is to read his word. Like you can't expect to hear from God if you don't know what he sounds like. Like if you don't know his voice, you don't know when he's speaking to you. And so it's very good to like just read his word. One way that I do is like if something's been heavy on my heart, like let's say anger has been heavy on my heart. Like I just been feeling angry. I see a lot of people around me are angry and it's starting to frustrate me and rub off on me. Well, then you know what, Lord, what does your word say about anger? And I'll do it that way and I'll just Google it and then I'll look up the scriptures, but then I'll read them in my own Bible because I do have the study Bible that help breaks it down for me. So you have to read his word in order to know his voice. And my scripture for this one is Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So like I said, can't have faith without hearing and hearing only comes by the word of God so you have to read his word you guys in order to know what it sounds like if you don't know his voice then you don't know if it's him or the enemy talking to you and if you know his word then you know his voice and you can decipher the two okay my number four is come at peace like come restful to him and this can be accomplished during your worship time where you're worshiping him and you're praising him and you're thanking him and you're just laying it all out for him and then i think that that helps you come restful because you've already laid it all out and now you're able to read his word and you're coming to him restfully and my scripture for that is going to be mark 6 31. Okay, so Mark 6, 31, and he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted to a deserted place and rest for a while, for there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So God wants us to be restful. He wants us to rest and he wants us to have the chance to just saw sometimes, you know what I mean? It's not bad to rest. You don't have to be go, 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 go. In fact, when we come to him, we should be in a place of rest where our mind's not going 10,000 miles per hour because you don't want to be distracted, which leads me to my number five which i don't have a scripture for but it's just common sense to me like no distractions find a time in your day where you don't have any distractions whether it be 5 10 15 minutes or longer bryson hush 5 10 15 minutes or longer like just find that time in your day where you have no distractions and maybe you sing one song to him and then maybe you're able to read a couple verses of something that you just really need an encouragement and uplifting on but no distractions so you need time where it's quiet i like to do my time early in the morning before the boys wake up or i like to do it during their nap time or i like to do it during their nap time but that's what works best for me like i said my schedule may not work for everybody but your quiet time no distractions so turn your phone off that's why i use my cute i use my computer for youtube so that way i'm not on my phone like trying to skip and look at it and so or i use the tv for music so yeah just find a time where there's no distractions you're not going to be distracted by your phone you're not going to be distracted by your kids and as much as we love our kids they can be a distraction i'm not saying it's bad but your alone time with god will help you be a better parent and so it's okay to not have them as a distraction during your alone time with God. And so I hope that this really encouraged you guys and maybe you can go in harder with your alone time with God. I know that's something that I'm gonna be working on all 2020 for the rest of my life. And so I love you guys. Always remember that Jesus loves you more. If you haven't already, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Remember, I love you guys, but Jesus loves you more. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah! Bye guys.